Hello, everybody, and welcome to Artist Corner. Today, I'm joined by Eric Moen. Hello. He's a sound designer and game designer who's currently working for Bungie. And some games you, you've probably heard his work on include Buddy Simulator, Snakey Bus, Fallen Angel, and you also have made some short films in the past too, like The Query. Oh my gosh. I, I can't believe you I can't believe you found that. I I mean I leave that up, but yeah, I I, I did I did do that. Um <laughs> wow, that's crazy. That's like that's like what four or four years ago, four or five years ago that I made that. Oh my god. Yeah, I did I did all the audio for that. Um so I, I can credit myself. I can credit myself for that. <laughs> and you've also worked with Max Duggan on your EP Windfall. Yes. Yeah. And I, you've interviewed Max before and that was a that was a good interview. I like that one. Thank you. I appreciate it. So yeah, thank you for joining me today. I'm really excited to talk to you and learn about some sound design stuff, which is something I'm not actually familiar with really. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be a, a fountain of knowledge if that <laughs> if I can be in, in any regard to that. Yeah. Cool. Well, what got you started in your sound design journey? That is a it's a that's a long story-ish. It's like a medium length story, I guess. Um so back in high school, um I was learning guitar. I was taking guitar classes outside of school and I was in my guitar class in high school and also playing the drums. Um, and so I got like a bit of a musical background in that way. I would by no means say it's professional. I was very much just like a hobbyist and getting the easy A um, <laughs> in high school. Um, but uh, I did I did keep some of that knowledge and like I can still play guitar and all of that. So when I got to college, um, and I needed to decide on a major. I chose game design uh, because I played a bunch of video games. I thought I could design them, uh, and I had no real other like, not aspiration, but just like idea of what I wanted to do. I didn't know like my dad's an engineer, but I didn't really know if I wanted to do engineering. My mom's an interior designer. I didn't know if I wanted to do interior design, um, and it just so happened that like game design was kind of a new degree ish at the time, and. Uh, there was uh, a school in Chicago where I was living um, that offered a degree in game design. So I was like, screw it. Like, I'll just do that. You know, like there's, <laughs> there's, there's no real like right answer, I guess, at that time in life. Um, unless you somehow actually know what you want to do for the rest of your life at, at that age, which is incredible and definitely go with it. But I didn't. Uh, and so I just kind of threw a dart at the dartboard, landed on game design and ran with it. Um, got to college did my first year and found out I was really bad at game design. Like I am terrible at it. <laughs> uh, and so I was getting through my classes just fine, but I did not really enjoy the work. I wasn't very good at it. Um, at least I knew I wasn't good enough to make it into a career. Um, so I was kind of panicking like, oh crap, I'm going to like waste four years of my life in college um, trying to like figure out how to do game design. Uh and as I was figuring out what to like pivot to off of game design, um, I was still in my game design classes and ended up doing a lot of the musical work for those games um, as like group projects. And because I was usually the only person that knew how to do anything vaguely musical. Um, so I would write some music uh, on, I had a little game, like an original Game Boy <laughs> that had, uh, it's called LSDJ on it. And you could make little like chiptune songs off of the sound card on it. Um, and so I would just do that because everyone was making pixel art games, that kind of a thing, just to keep it simple. Um, so I would do that. And uh, it it was fun enough and I enjoyed doing it. Um, so I kind of stuck with it. And eventually doing music for student games led me to also being asked to do the sound design because they can't find anyone else to do them uh, either. Um, at DePaul, I think it ended up really being only me and Max uh, as like the main audio folks in our class. Um, there were some other folks that were, not to say that there weren't other audio, audio folks there, there were other audio folks, but we were definitely getting a 
bulk of the work and putting ourselves out there more noticeably, I think, than others. Um, so we just ended up doing a lot together. Um, and uh, yeah, just being asked to do sound design here and there led me to find out that I enjoyed sound design a lot more than music uh, when it came to doing it as like a job or like doing it for someone. Um, and so I found that like music was very good as like a personal thing for me. I liked making music for myself and not really having like a deadline, that kind of a thing. But for sound design, the deadline was motivating. Um, and sticking to that like guidelines of we need a sound that sounds like this by this day for this purpose uh, made a lot more sense to me and was uh, just more fun plainly. So I, I pivoted um, as soon as I figured that out to like a game audio degree in my mind. Um, so we, they didn't have like a specific game audio degree, but they had a sound design minor that was technically mm. theater sound design. Um, <laughs> But I worked with my counselors and got it figured out to get like all of the game audio classes to count as those audio credits for the minor. Nice. And then it's kind of stayed the game design path. Uh, and so I ended up graduating with a bachelor's in game design and a minor in sound design, <laughs> even though like I ended up just kind of not really using any of that. Um, I, I just took the classes that were all about game audio and game music. And that was sort of the start of the the journey. And then from there, it was just working on a bunch of game jam games, working on a bunch of personal projects. Uh, and like at the time, Twitter was really good for game audio. So I was really ingrained in like the Twitter uh, game audio scene and just like following a bunch of people, learning what I could, constantly doing redesigns. Um, I guess not constantly, because that, that sounds a bit like like I'm on that grind set, yeah, which I wasn't. Uh, like I, I very much so like took my time with things. It took me about two years to get the job that I have now, wow. um, which is the only job that I have had in in sound design. <laughs> that's like a full time job. Everything else has been like contract uh, stuff like that. But um, eventually, one of my professors was starting up a, uh, um, I guess, an audio house to do game audio for smaller companies and contracted me to do some additional work on a game um and then from there i ended up working with one of their clients that they turned down which was fallen angel um and then worked with the fallen angel folks on their uh next title for a little bit um ended up working with some buddies for Buddy Simulator, um, which were friends of mine from college. So like every little, like every game that I'd worked on had some sort of tie in to like school in that way. Um, but just doing those things kind of filled out my resume and my website well enough um, to where I felt much more confident applying for jobs. And just through like knowing some people through Twitter, um, especially knowing some bunching employees through Twitter, uh, I eventually got recommended for the position that I have now, um, applied for it, went through the whole process. And now here I am. It was very, very quick. It was a very quick pivot from like, I'm doing like f essentially freelance work to the smallest degree to like running with a uh, job application to work at Bungie. Um, so there's the whole story, I guess, to get to where I am now. And now I've been at Bungie for like two years. So I've been staying that course. So since you have been putting yourself out there a lot, have there been any people in the audio world in particular that have inspired you or maybe they're a role model to you in why you put yourself out there? Oh, man. Uh, I mean, definitely, like, all of the people that I used to follow on, on Twitter, because unfortunately, like, Twitter is kind of, Turned into a, a, a wasteland of sorts. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and a lot of people jumped ship, um, but it, like some notable sound designers that I I followed and and still do, um, were like Evan Regami, um, doing the Real Talk uh, streams, which still go on. Definitely check them out. They're very good. That I watched them almost religiously for like a year um, to better my reel um, and to just get like great like ground floor concepts on how to better put myself out there. Um, I followed Eunice Turner a lot um, just because I love his sound design. It's so creative and so just like concrete, if that's a, a way to describe it. Like it's 
impeccable sound design and he's like a mm -hmm. super sweet person like he's so nice um so i was following him for a while just for like the pure inspiration of like i can i can do this and i can make cool sounds out of just what's around me um and then people who are my coworkers now weirdly enough were also people i followed and idolized on twitter for a while like uh juan uribe um pax helgeson carly knight um I followed all three of them on Twitter for the longest time. Uh, Pax was actually the person who helped me out the most um, with getting the job at Bungie. Um, like he gave me like a real review. It must have been like my senior year of college. He reviewed my reel, and I feel so bad because it's such an awful reel. It was like five or six minutes long. It was a bunch of game jam games, had music and sound design, and it. it was so unorganized. Um, but he was super nice about it and gave me like, some really sweet feedback about it. Um, and then like a year later, he was like, Hey, how's it going? Like, how's the real update working? And I was like, Oh, I didn't expect him to reach out. Uh, and so he just kept up that dialogue with me. And every once in a while I'd message him. It was like once every like three or four months, we weren't like, we're not like buddies or anything, but we were just like acquaintances over Twitter. And he was very helpful and willing to help, uh, me try and like better myself in sound design. Um, yeah. And eventually he ended up helping me with the, um, the Bungie application by doing like a recommendation and everything. And so that was like, he was the hugest foot in the door for me. Um, and I, I can't ever like thank him enough for everything that he's done for me. Uh, which is funny because now I work with him and I could thank him every day if I felt so inclined. Um, but, uh, yeah, those are those are a few notable names. I'm sure there's some others that I'm forgetting, and I'm sorry that I am. But uh, yeah, those those are some some great people to follow on whatever social medias that they have, because um, they're great. They're amazing people. Yeah, I've I've learned over just interacting with people in the audio world. So many people are just so nice, and I think. Really, if you just come in with the mindset that you're just passionate about what you do and you actually want to just talk to people because you want to talk to them, that's something mm -hmm. I, I really try to, or not, I guess not try to, because then it's kind of contradicting what I'm saying, <laughs> but, right. but you know what I mean, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like the audio community is really special. Um, because everyone just wants everyone else to succeed. It's not a competition. Um, no one's trying to outdo one another. And if someone is, then it's a little like weird and no one quite <laughs> no one quite enjoys that vibe of of like stark competition um within game audio, at least from what I've uh come across. Everyone's very supportive um and and willing to help when they can. Um, even though we're all like super busy all the time. <laughs> um we we do try to take our time uh with each other and and make sure that we're all like improving and learning off of one another um like my people at work like my coworkers, um they're always super willing to like take 10 15 minutes out of their day and explain how they worked through something or how they put together something or like I'll, i've put together like little videos of how i've made certain assets uh or like made certain building blocks for assets and uh, sent like presets to my coworkers and things like that. But even outside of work, um, people on Twitter have messaged me here and there and said like, I don't know how this is sounding. Like, could I get some feedback on this? Um, sometimes it's music, sometimes it's sound design, but I'm always happy to say like, I will give feedback. Like I will give them full context as to whether like I'm well-versed in that area of sound design and stuff like that. But no matter what, I'm going to try my best to help them. Um, because I was in their position, you know, not too long ago and everyone goes through that. And like, if I never had the help of, of Pax and Juan and, uh, um, like Kevin and Eunice Turner, um, just like putting themselves out there, um, I would have never gotten to where I am. And I, I feel compelled to do the same, uh, for other people that are like, not necessarily like up and coming feels like a bad way to put it, but that are starting essentially um so yeah like i it's it's a great community like everyone's very 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 nice yeah also you mentioned how people in the audio world are often very busy have you ever struggled with finding the right work-life balance and absolutely 
Do you have any advice to anyone who also struggles with it and wants to get better at that? Oh gosh. Uh I've <laughs> um it's hard. It like do not beat yourself up for uh slipping, I guess, is is a as a a decent piece of advice I guess I can give. Cause I I mean I still slip. There are plenty of, of days where I, I work past five o'clock or I start earlier than nine. Um there are days where I'm like thinking about my work, even though I'm out with friends, things like that. And the best thing you can do is just kind of like catch yourself and say like, hold on a minute, like table that for later or realize it's not the end of the world if you lose an idea because um, others will come, you know? Uh, like I used to be really like nervous about losing musical ideas um, when I was still doing a bunch of music stuff. So I would like record a voice memo really quick, um, but I would never actually like go back to them I'd like I would save the idea and then never do anything with it. And so I kind of realized that I, at least for the way that I work, if I come up with an idea while I'm out, I'll try my best to remember it. But if I don't, I forget it. It's not the end of the world. If it was really important, I'll remember it again. Um, and if it wasn't that important, then it's fine. And it's not the end of the world. And just kind of is like, I could lump it into like my process if I really wanted to put a term to it. <laughs> um, but uh yeah, like you're you're gonna slip. Like you're a passionate person, right? You know, it's it's gonna be on your mind, and it's not bad that it is. Um, but like catching yourself when it becomes a problem, like if you're like having a I don't know, having a chat with your parents, just like a casual chat with your parents, um, and you find yourself like not paying attention to the conversation because you're thinking about like, oh, I need to cut the lows on that track, <laughs> and it's like maybe you should take a breather and like. Maybe time box yourself, whatever works better for you, because it's different for every person as to how they can approach those things. But um, like not beating yourself up for slipping and catching yourself when you do start to like slip up on keeping that work-life balance is, is good. Um, so I, I had friends in, in college. It was harder in college because college is college and there's a lot of work yeah. that you just kind of get as a student. Um, but I did get some friends that were like, hey, you you work a lot and you talk about work a lot and you don't do a lot else as far as I'm aware. And I was like, Oh man, you're right. Like I should try to find a way. Cause like you can't lower the amount of work in college. You know, you can't just say oh, I'm done with that work and just like start failing your classes. Yeah. But you can find ways to not have it permeate into your life. Um, you know, you can keep those separated. You can do your homework and then, hang out with friends and not tell them about how difficult your homework was and how it's plaguing your mind and how I have to fix this later. And I'm going to stay up all night on this, that, and the other, like it's good to vent, but maybe don't make it your whole life. If that's going to start bothering like the people around you that like all you do is talk about work and nothing in your life goes on besides work, you know, gets a bit monotonous for both you and, and the listener. This, this is kind of, by luck but it also helps have if you're in college it helps to have a good professor too i i currently i'm actually in community college right now and mm -hmm. i'm only doing my core classes so it's just english history and journalism but my history teacher is so chill basically nice in one of our classes he said it's just a history class don't let it ruin your life mm -hmm. and i wish more professors or teachers would do that you know Oh man, I would have loved to hear that. Um, specifically like in high school, because I used to like, I was really, really bad with uh doing poorly in school. Like I would yeah. like, break down, you know, I was I was a mess if I like got anything lower than a B on anything. Um, and when I got to high school, like the difficulty of my schoolwork jumped massively. Like I went from doing like basic math to like algebra over a summer um i was like why are there letters in the math now <laughs> um and uh i i ended up getting like a d my first semester of algebra and i lost it i thought i was like i thought i was gonna die it was the worst thing um and i ended up getting like a c the second semester and i was still upset with myself about it um and i kind of wished that at like the time someone was just like hey it's it's algebra like 
algebra does not define your life, you know? <laughs> um, and what it took for me was like failing a couple classes. Um, or I, I just, just one, I didn't fail two. I just failed the one. <laughs> I'm not, it wasn't that bad, but, um, and I it's math. Again. yeah. And it's math. Right. <laughs> um, I ended up failing my English class because I like, I got sick for a little bit and, and just fell behind on some homework and I'm really slow at reading. So like I was just falling behind in the class naturally anyways. And, uh, it was just like a perfect storm for me to not be able to make up the missing work. And so I ended up failing that class and I was like, oh crap, like what are like the, what are the consequences? Like my life is going to be over. I'm never going to go to college. <laughs> and like, the re like really the only consequence to that was doing summer school, which was way simpler. I got through summer school in like a week because I just, I was a, I was like committed to getting out of there. Uh, so I just like blew through all the work and got ahead of the whole rest of the class and just got out within like a week. So I was like, oh, my summer wasn't even ruined, you know, like summer school was not that bad. It was actually kind of chill because I had something to go and do. Yeah. Um, so it's not to say to like fail your classes, <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely pass your classes, but uh, it was not the end of the world for me. And it's definitely like failure is, is just not an end all be all for sure um, in that regard. Uh, so I, yeah, I definitely, I'm glad that your, your history professor was saying stuff like that. And I'm glad that I had professors that were kind of similar that were like, Hey, like, like things are, are just not, not going to work all the time. And in some cases that's okay. It's <laughs> a school assignment or a class is, is usually one of them. Um, so it's not the end of the world if, if stuff goes a little bit wrong. Yeah, and it's it also translates into the real world, especially. I think it's more realistic to have that mindset, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gets a little tougher in the real world when it comes to, like, money, you know? <laughs> that's where Taxes. it starts to be. Yeah, that's where, like, my, my privilege starts to show a bit, where it's like, if I, I – thankfully, I could afford to go to college. Um, but, like, if I was not able to afford to go to college and I couldn't – afford wasting a year because I failed a couple classes, then, then maybe failure is not so easy of a thing to brush off, you know, um, or if you're a surgeon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you're a surgeon, then you should definitely, I would hope you're passing your classes before you start sticking your hands in someone's brain, you know? <laughs> Are there any examples of steps you've taken to help you find more work in the audio world? Oh gosh. Examples of steps that I've taken to find more work. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I, not to, not to be like no, but I don't I don't think so. Like I was I I really dislike I, the reason so oh, this is such a <laughs> a long way to say no. Um but the uh like the reason I work as a full-time employee at a AAA company is because I don't enjoy freelancing. And the reason I don't enjoy freelancing is because of all the networking and schmoozing and marketing yourself and like shopping around that you have to do. Um, it's just tiresome. And it's a whole second job in and of itself to market yourself as a sound designer. Um, so I, I skipped all of that really, um, which was a, a bit naive for me to try and do because like, I just, I needed to land something crazy, like a mid-level sound designer position at Bungie out of nowhere. And that thankfully happened to me, you know? Yeah. Um, but like there were, there were other places that I was applying to uh, and getting rejected to. So I, I wasn't like immediately like a shoe in, um, but I wasn't, I wasn't like marketing myself and saying, Hey, I'm a sound designer, put me on your game, that kind of a thing. Um, like my Twitter was not very active. All I really did was posted. I posted a, a redesign maybe once a month at, at that kind of cadence, you know, um, I wasn't, and even with those redesigns, I was just like, Hey, I did a little redesign. Let me know what you think. And then put it out in the world. It wasn't like I did a redesign, hire me for your game. <laughs> here's my email. Here's my link to my reel, that kind of a thing with every so post. Down their throats. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, because I, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want like a, a boatload of, of games in front of me. Um, nor did I really think I would get that anyways, by doing it that way. Like it just felt, it just felt disingenuous. It wasn't, 
the way I wanted to go about getting those kinds of jobs. Um, and so, and also at the time I was working part-time at a music lesson studio, uh, like I wasn't in like a financial need for those kinds of jobs. So I had, I had the freedom to have that choice. Um, thankfully, uh, so yeah, I, I didn't really take any steps to like get more jobs or do better on my, my resumes, um, or my job applications and, and things like that. It, the, the games that I got were pretty much not given to me, but like I got through very specific connections that I don't think I have an easy way to recommend to a general audience. Like my professor that just so happened to be my professor in college, just so happened to start up an audio house and just so happened to need extra help just after I graduated. And for some reason he latched on to me as a student, um, as like a, as a student who was committed, I guess, and reached out to me and said, Hey, I think you were like committed enough. Would you want to help out on this? I'll pay you this, that, and the other. And, uh, like, I just so happened to have the free time. And I said, yeah, sure. Um, so like as niche of a situation as that is, I, there's nothing I can really pull from that to say like, Oh, just go to college and get an audio professor that starts up an audio house, you know? Um, because that's where most of my like beginning freelance gigs, uh, came from. And then before that could grow into a bigger freelance, uh, like job, I landed at Bungie. Um, so I kind of skipped that whole step of trying to figure out the best ways of, of marketing myself. So unfortunately I don't really have any good advice, <laughs> nor would I feel comfortable trying to give advice. I think about that cause I'm sure it would be wrong. I'm sure I'd be dead wrong. Sorry, can I think for a second? Yeah, go for it. So I think personally that you can get a good job as someone in this field, whether or not you go to school. But I was wondering, what do you think about not going to school? And if that will somehow change the kind of work you can get? That is a good question. And like, as someone who went to school, I definitely benefited from school. Um, like having gone to DePaul and taken the game audio courses that they had there, I definitely grew as a sound designer and was able to find out that I enjoyed sound design. Um, and like, I, there were some school projects that I had on my reel for a while. It gave me easy access to game jams. Um, but would I say it's worth it? I don't think so. Like there are other avenues to find those same things. Like you can make your own redesigns. Like I didn't need a professor to tell me redesign this clip of Sonic. You know, I could have mm -hmm. found a clip of Sonic myself and redesigned it. Um, it. I definitely needed someone to tell me that was something I could do, but uh, did I need, you know, like, three years of someone telling me, here, redesign this clip, now redesign this clip, now redesign this clip. Probably not. Um, but the extrinsic motivation was good for me because that, that that helps me keep, uh, helps keep me motivated. Um, just having like a deadline and someone else like reviewing it later on. Um, but not something I think you need to pay like $60,000 for, uh, you know, <laughs> same thing with the game jams. Like I had uh, a games development club called the JDE at the time uh, that was um, very like helpful in terms of finding game jams and people to work with and that kind of a thing uh, at DePaul. And I ended up help like ended up helping run it and uh, like work with Global Game Jam on a couple of things, you know, like we got it to a pretty decent spot where we were like bringing in students and developers from other schools even to like collaborate on on game jams and things like that. But did I need to go to those lengths to get to the job that I have now? I don't think so. Like I could have just gone to itch.io and found game jams there. And it's like a little scary because like they're strangers and you don't know who you're going to talk to. But um, I think I would rather that than also, you know, a $60,000 <laughs> <laughs> to go find a game jam. Um, having the facilities was kind of nice. Like having some computers with Pro Tools on it was cool. Um but again, like I use Reaper now, which is free, free-ish, you know, 
Um, and like, I use that day to day at my, at my literal job. Like I never, I, I used pro tools and logic in school, but in my day to day, I use Ableton and Reaper. So like school didn't have any effect on what DAW I used in like a, a literal sense. You know, so, um, as someone who went to school, yeah, to like wrap that up, like I, as someone who went to school, I think it was good. And I don't think it's a bad idea to want to go to school for audio and in any respect. Um, but I definitely don't think it's necessary. Like my degree did not help me get this job. My degree didn't help me get any job. I think, um, I, I don't even think my degree is on like my website. You know, I, it's a, I think it's a piece of paper that's just in that cabinet over there. Um, and it's just folded up in like a little folder there you know it's just it's just a piece of paper it's not really helping me or not helping me even it's just kind of there um so the most that i got out of college was just meeting friends and being exposed to game development stuff like nearly 24 7 um which was good um but there are other ways to to expose yourself to that without having to go to school that are equally as effective sometimes even more so when i'm and from my understanding, I think it it might be a good idea to, because depending on the person, there might be different reasons for why you want to go to school. Mm -hmm. And it could be a good exercise to maybe, if you're considering it, write down some questions asking yourself why you want to go to school or what you think you could get out of it. And kind of yeah. just asking yourself. Yeah, having that self-reflection of like, do I need to go to school for this is, is always good. Um, as someone who has a lot of privilege, like I grew up in a, uh, like a very middle-class white family. We had money. My parents went to school. I think my grandparents went to school um, or college, I should specify. Um, so it was just kind of like expected that me and like my brother were going to go to college. Um, and there wasn't really any, there wasn't any questioning from me at the time about whether I would or wouldn't go to college, um, except for one moment, which was uh, after my um, the SATs. I think is, is oh. the test. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did really poorly on my SATs. Um, I didn't do it awfully, but I scored low enough to where my counselors were saying, "Like you're not going to get into every school um, that you would like to," and like the whole MO of, of the high school I went to is that like everyone gets into college, everyone goes to college, they get to the college that they want to do and they have a great career and they have a great life. It was amazing. Everyone's amazing. You know, <laughs> in hindsight, it was a bit too idealistic and like overly like toxically optimistic. Um, but it did instill the thought in my mind, like I have to go to college. I have to go somewhere. Um, so for me, I didn't really have that moment of do I go to college or do I not go to college? It was just where do I go to college? Um, but if someone knows early on enough in high school, um, or even before then that they have a career in mind, if they can find a way to avoid going to school, like going to college, um, that gets them to the same place. I don't see a real reason, you know, yeah. barring, like you said, like surgery, you know, like if you're a doctor, <laughs> like maybe please go to school. <laughs> like if you're going to be like a, a biochemist. Maybe school is good for you. <laughs> I'm not a biochemist. I can't talk to that. So, but in terms of like creative stuff, that's a good way to phrase it. In terms of creative like disciplines, you could probably get away with it. Um, like my dad's a civil engineer. He probably couldn't have got, gotten away with not going to school, at least for some amount of time. My mom, an interior designer, maybe could have gotten away with less. But again, there's huge technical aspects to both of those jobs that, I'm not aware of. So it's kind of hard to get blanket advice on that. But in terms of like sound design, sure, I, I don't see a reason why we would or like wouldn't hire someone that did or didn't go to college. You know, it's not it's not a make or break kind of thing in terms of like career development, I think. Yeah. Also, my brother is an aerospace engineer. And mm. I think you probably need to go to school for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> 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 yeah, you definitely need to go to college for aerospace engineering. I would, I would at least hope so. Otherwise, I'd need to like, I need to really vet someone if they're like, I didn't go to college, but I want to be an aerospace engineer.
Can I think for a second? Yeah, go for it. Does your process change when making music compared to when you do sound design or sound effects and all that? Yeah, uh, like dramatically. Um, my process for making music versus my process for sound design is is way different. Um, both on like a literal and a conceptual level. Um, like I'll, I'll literally use different plugins and like I use Ableton for music, but Reaper for sound design. Um, just because that's kind of the the way I've shaken things out. Mostly because I use Reaper at work now. That I used to do all my sound design in Ableton. as well as my music, um, but grew to, to like using Reaper more for sound design for a handful of different reasons. Um, I should try, I, sh I should try doing Ableton sound design again, because that was fun when I had that still. But um, when it comes to like working on music, I do it for more like personal reasons. Um, for like, it's like a hobby, really. I don't, I'm not, ever really planning to show it to anyone. I'm never really planning to even keep what I write, that kind of a stuff. I'm mostly just like grabbing a guitar or pulling up the keyboard and making a cool sound and playing something with it, maybe writing some lyrics or something, just trying to have like fun. Or using And an, a computer keyboard. exactly, oh my gosh, the amount of music I've written using like the middle row of my keyboard as a piano. <laughs> A lot of music written like that. Um, Did you know the Stardew Valley soundtrack was made using a computer keyboard? really Yeah. i can you know i can kind of hear it thinking through the music right now and like those melodies were pretty simple but like i mean they're effective gray melodies um <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but no no that that's funny I, I, there's always something about stardew valley that's like oh did you know this and it's like oh wow yeah It's a great game, yeah. it's a fantastic game love that game to death um but uh yeah with like sound design i come at it at a much more like not calculated but like more thought through approach um it's like okay what sound do i need it's an explosion okay i know that needs a transient body and tail and i need to keep the low frequency content mono and i need to like make sure that it's got this characteristic because it's a metallic explosion um or it's a sci-fi explosion and i have some freedom to make a cooler transient and keep the body and tail more realistic or that kind of a thing like i've 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 got like a method uh, in my brain for when it comes to sound design to where I can like build a foundation and then sprinkle on some like what if kind of creativity on top of it. Um, but when it comes to music, all of it's just like, I don't know what's going to happen. Let's just try this. Let's just see what, what sticks, you know. And usually it's it's like nothing because I'm super critical of my own work. So like almost all the music that I write, I think is terrible. I, I don't think I've really written much good music. Uh, That's not true. at all okay and i, I appreciate that because i definitely need someone to remind me that i have written like good music before um You have. but uh but like when it comes to that creative stuff i get super in my own head about it uh so like i'll write a song for like an hour think it's garbage and then never open the project ever again but with sound design it's like something i can come back come back to day after day after day and say oh i need to tweak that i i have something that i need to do there I have a checklist in my mind of like, okay, I need to master that asset. I need to compress it a little bit here. I need to shift that by a few milliseconds to the right or to the left. Um, maybe not that like mathematical, but it's like, I'll usually get the the feeling of like, something is wrong here and I need to fix it with sound design. And then with music, it's like, I have no feeling of where it's going to go or what needs to be done. Um, so I I think just that's kind of normal. let it fly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad that that's normal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when whenever I make music, it's kind of, for me, it's like a long process of improvising and just trial and error and seeing what kind of, what works and what doesn't. And Mhm. just, Mm mhm. Mm it, it's a long process, but. yeah, I I there's something about music for me that's like stuck with me I guess for so long that I'm still doing it. Um like my new year's resolution to be a little cheesy about it is to write an album for the year. Um and I like have my whole plan. I'm going to try and write a song a month. Currently not really going super according to that plan already even though it's February. Um, a little behind on getting my February song finished, but uh, I'm at least taking the time to find out what sound I want to do and that kind of a thing. Um,
And even though like almost always when I'm writing music, I like will end end off my writing session almost mad. Like, <laughs> I like I'll there. like I'll I'll start <laughs> writing music and I'm like, yeah, I got this great idea. Let's let's do it. Like let's get this on paper. And then after like an hour and a half, I'm like, that was not worth my time. Like that <laughs> was just awful. And then the next day, I'm like, let's do it again. You know. <laughs> It's it's a weird it's a weird relationship I have with writing music specifically, um, and so something compels me to keep writing it. And I think this year I'm trying to figure out what exactly compels me to to keep doing uh, the musical stuff. Um, and so yeah, I'm I'm sticking with that album, and I'm going to try and at least get, if anything, like a small EP out of it. Um, who knows if it gets done? I'm not going to be like, oh, it's coming out. January 1st, 2025, <laughs> Eric Moen EP, but uh, it's, it's, I don't know, it's something that I'm working on and it's a different way of, of working with sound. So I enjoy that I can kind of take a break from sound design, but still work within audio on music. Yeah, speaking of release dates, I found that I can't do release dates because when I make music, all I want to do is just put it out there right away, mm. even though that's not how you're really supposed to. Well, yeah. I, there's there's no real like you're supposed to do it this way way anyways <laughs> you know like you can put it out immediately or you could hold on to it forever and i think both of those ways are valid um in terms of like creative uh like practices you know like like i'm definitely on the other end of the spectrum where i i hold on to a lot of my music and i don't show anyone any of it and that's only getting worse with the music i'm writing this year um just because like i i just don't think it's good enough I haven't quite nailed down why I don't show it to people, you know? Um, but uh, I also think just releasing music once, you, once you're once you done with it or once you think it's ready for a release is totally fine. Mm -hmm. Like the the idea of like marketing a like release date and things like that has never appealed to me. Um, just seems like a lot of unnecessary work. Like I'm not making music for anyone. So I don't know why I try to market it to anyone at the Damn. moment. Um, cause I, I never really wanted to do music as a career, um, at least writing music as a career. Um, I'm happy to do it, but like trying to build a career day by day, brick by brick, you know, I'm going to write a song for this, that, <laughs> and the other. I, that's not me. That is not me even a little bit. Yeah. The, the hard part is that is more of what I'm trying to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think, I think it takes time and even if I can't figure it out right now hopefully i can figure something out you know yeah it it's a it's a tough one because like i mean i think it's tough with almost any creative discipline to like build a career out of it um because like in my mind creativity was never really meant to be commodified <laughs> not to like put big words on it uh but like I don't know. I like I like to draw. Like I have a little notebook over here. Oh, nice. It's kind of off camera, but like I draw on my free time, um, and I'm not good at it. And I want to be good at it, uh, but I've tried to figure out why I want to be good at it and what my qualifications for being good at drawing is. Um, and it always ends up being like, would someone pay for this, or would this be something that I've seen someone pay for in like a previous. Uh, interaction or something like that or would I see this at like an artist's corner at a, a convention or things like that and that's the name of the show oh oh <laughs> whoa what <laughs> my mind just exploded into a billion pieces um <laughs> man name drop I didn't even mean to do that on purpose um but yeah it always ends up coming back to like a money thing of like oh like this is good enough because someone would pay for it. And I vastly dislike that. Like things are just good because people put their time and effort into it. Um, and I'm sure there's like, there are objective good things out there, you know, like a drawing or a painting can look objectively good, but then there's like creative fulfilling good as well. And that's mostly what I enjoy about creative stuff, like drawing and sound design and music and, and other things like that um like i've i've animated a few things like i took a hand-drawn animation class in college and so that's why I, I found that i enjoyed drawing a bit more um and so like yeah most most of the things that i enjoy are usually not things that involve a lot of like money and marketing and <laughs> job stuff around it like if i could do sound design and music without 
having a job associated with it that sounds amazing like mm -hmm. i love doing sound design i don't think i like doing jobs is you know <laughs> the the way that it goes um but in the unfortunate you know state of the world is that we all have to work jobs to live you know yeah um so i'm kind of making the best of both worlds and turning something i enjoy into a job but there are definitely days where like it feels like a job and there are days where it feels like a fun thing um so I forget where this train of thought was even going. That's okay. Um, I just started kind of rambling. I, I said the commodification of creativity, and that was already <laughs> way too lofty of a statement for someone like me to say, um, or even feel qualified to comment on. But yeah, like that's that's kind of where I'm at with like trying to build up a career and stuff like that. Like thankfully having Bungie as like a name for myself is a very easy thing for me to say like, yeah, I worked at a AAA studio. I can prove I have the experience to do this as a job for other places now. Um, so that's kind of like an unfortunate reality that you kind of like need that foot in the door, that kind of a thing. Because at the end of the day, like a job is going to treat you like a job. And even though like you could be super creatively great at what you do, you still have to do the job part of it, which yeah. stinks. Like if I didn't have to have a website, I wouldn't have one. If I didn't have to like, have a cover letter and resume template i wouldn't have one um but i have them because i need them to like live at this point so that's kind of the way that that's worked out there's Again, also a, a big there, but... oh sorry no i was gonna say I, you can totally change the subject because i'm just spinning in circles now on the whole commodification of creativity <laughs> i was just gonna say there's a big difference between a job and a career too that's mm -hmm. something I've been thinking about more recently. And I'm I'm at a point where I'm kind of, it's weird how I'm, or not weird, but it's interesting how I've been able to, and I'm really grateful and lucky because I've been able to interview people like you who are further along their careers. And I'm I'm kind of at my starting point right now where I don't know at all where I might, end up and i'm just glad that i can learn from everyone's perspectives and experience yeah i mean i think you're doing a great thing just like talking to people like that's kind of just the way to do it is like find out the different ways that people have gotten to where they are and then extrapolate what you can from those because almost everyone has their own specific niche story as to how they got the job that they got and some people like when i was uh, I hate to say like when I was starting out, but like mm -hmm. when I was early on in my like career, um, and I was kind of like that sponge for knowledge of like who's on Twitter talking about sound design. There were definitely people that like talked about how to get a job as if they knew the secret formula, you know? Um, and then you would ask, how did you get your job? And then they would have some very specific niche story. And it's like, great. I can't follow that. Like no one's going to have my professor to hire them, that kind of a thing. Um, no one's going to have whatever that other person had to get them their job or their first job or their second job even, you know? Um, so like, yeah, the boundary of like job and, and career is, is a very, very interesting one to kind of think about and, and think through um, and yeah, like I don't know. I think you're doing it. You're you're doing a good thing. Just talking to people, and like <laughs> probably taking in the right bits of information and leaving the bits of information that just aren't pertinent to you. Because that's that's what I did. It's like when someone started kind of waxing to me about like this is how I got a job and you can do it too. Uh, I was like, I can't do that <laughs> um, because I'm not you. Yeah. But there are some things that I saw them do that could be applicable to the path that I'm going down. Like you know doing constant redesigns and things like that. Like I, I guess one concrete thing that I could point to is um, I like what helped me a little bit was doing uh, these sound design streams that I did a while yeah, ago actually, on Twitch. I know that you used to dress up as a frog. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I, yeah. I, I still have that frog suit. I still have <laughs> that. Um yeah, one of the Twitch rewards or like the Twitch points rewards was to like make me dress up as a frog and sound design in a frog suit. <laughs> That's probably the most content creator I've been um, <laughs> ever. But uh, 
doing those streams was nice because not because of like it bringing in an audience or um, being something unique that no other sound designer was doing. Um, but it was good for me because it gave me a way to motivate myself to keep practicing. Um, like I said, I would stream twice a week for at least an hour working on sound design. And usually I would work on the same piece a couple times uh, throughout streams. You know, I'd work on a piece for three or four streams and then be done with it, move on to another piece, that kind of a thing. Um, but it gave me like a set schedule to practice with. And that was what I benefited, uh, what benefited me the most from it. Um, occasionally I'd get, you know, like I got like a couple streams, where maybe like 10 people showed up and I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Like, <laughs> I think a couple of people that I work with now, like showed up to one of them one time. Like I think Juan was in one of the streams and I was like, oh my God, a bungee sound designer's in my stream. This is crazy. <laughs> um, but like, it's not like I got my job because I was on Twitch, you know? Um, but the, 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 the practice was, was great. And having just like a silly way to motivate myself into practicing sound design was mostly what I needed. Um, and it was kind of nice to like put that on my website as a way to stand out and things like that. Um, it was very much inspired by the real talk streams of like realizing that real talk was kind of the only mainstream mainstream uh, like hmm. audio live stream that's happening as far as I'm aware that's not music related that's specifically game audio. I'm sure there's there's tons of music producer streams like I, I think Kenny Beats is still doing like his music streams and stuff like that. Um, I love the streams by the way. I used to watch the streams all the time. They're pretty funny. Um, and I'm sure there's tons of others like producers that stream themselves now. Um, but like game audio, I don't think people, there are people that stream themselves like solo developing, but I don't see very many game audio streams. Um, I'm sure it's, it's like a niche that isn't, doesn't really make sense anyways. Like no one's going to sit there for two hours watching you listen to the same five seconds of a clip over and over and over again, mm -hmm. tweaking your low mids, you know, like it's just kind of not an entertaining thing to watch. Um, but uh, the fact that it kept me like on the path forward to improving my sound design and just practicing and getting feedback um, was was great. So like finding something like that to do is is good. I forget exactly how I got into this train of thought from jobs and careers, uh, but but we got but we got there. We yeah, got there somehow. So what I'm understanding is that you think consistency is a really important thing yes uh yeah I'll, I'll say that consistency is, is pretty good like um both in terms of like just bettering yourself at your craft and also in terms of like the career development kind of thing um because at least from my my brief experience with freelance stuff like putting yourself out there in a like a meaningful way consistently reminds people that like you exist and that you're available for work and if um that person somehow gets an opportunity you know a year down the line and you're still posting about how you make a song a week or something like that they're like oh yeah that guy does a song a week he must be pretty good and he's been like lightly following you for about a year or something like that and now now you've got your in in that regard. Um, but in terms of like practicing your craft, it's invaluable to be like just consistently doing stuff. Um, like even over the weekends, I don't I don't really do sound design on the weekends um, just because I, I do it nine to five for five days a week. <laughs> but <laughs> even after like two days of not doing sound design, I feel kind of rusty. Um, so just like keeping up on, on doing that, uh, where you just kind of, it's almost like, uh, like I, I'm really trying hard not to say like bash your head against the wall because <laughs> that feels like such like a defeatist way of saying it. But like, there's the the rises and like plateaus of yeah. the creative discipline, um, and like practicing things where like you'll get better and then you'll kind of plateau at where you're at for a bit and then all of a sudden I don't know where you'll start getting noticeably better really quickly and then plateau for a little while. And that's at least what I noticed with my own development was like, I would learn a couple of tricks here and I would get so good. And then I would stay steady for a while. And if I didn't do anything during that plateau, I would start to fall off. I would start to lose some of those 
tips and tricks again. I just start to forget things or lose the muscle memory and not be able to work as quickly. Um, so the consistency is, is really good. It was really good for me. And I think it's probably a widely applicable thing to recommend yeah. is, is practicing because you, <laughs> you do just get better with, with practice. Um, and especially when it's like directed practice of like, I want to be better at, uh, I don't know, sci-fi explosions, redesign a sci-fi explosion for four weeks, one a week, good to go. You've probably you've got four explosions now after a month and you're probably pretty good at putting together an explosion. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, that was advice given to me um, by another coworker of mine now. His name is uh, Adam Croft. Um, he, uh, back, back in the day, um, when he was giving me career advice, uh, he told me to like, choose a company to want to work for and just do whatever I need to do to work at that company. And whatever opportunities come up along the way are, those are your opportunities to like jump on. Um, so for me, it feels really weird to say it but like bungee was my uh was my goal i was like in 10 years i want to work at bungee um and that was you know two years ago or something like that uh because i really liked i played a lot of destiny at uh two at the time um and i really liked the weapon sound design i don't work on weapons i didn't achieve that i've never worked <laughs> on a weapon um but uh i really liked the weapon sound design and so i redesigned a bunch of destiny two weapons um, I have like maybe five or six redesigns of, of destiny weapons that I just had like sitting on my computer. Um, and one of them was in my reel for a little bit S still is needs to get out of there. But, um, I have like, I've got a redesign up somewhere. I think on my website from like years ago that I did of like a sniper redesign that I layered in some of the original game audio with. And I remember when I did that, I was like, oh, I'm crazy. I'm so good at this. Um, and it, it kind of ignited that, that love of sci-fi sound design. And so once I figured out that I really liked that over, um, any other kind of like sound design, like I like making cute sounds and like little UI bleeps and bloops, but the things that really, um, ignited my like fire, I guess, to for lack of a better metaphor, um, that got me motivated. That's probably a more concrete way to say it. Things that got me motivated were like, big explosive sci-fi things. Um, and so once I found that like niche within the niche of sound design, I was like, cool, I got to run with that and get, I, I got to be like the guy for sci-fi sound design. Um, everyone and their grandma also does like sound design for sci-fi stuff. So like, it's really <laughs> not, <laughs> it wasn't, it didn't end up being that niche of a niche, um, but I got a lot of practice on it. And then when the job opportunity for Bungie came around, I was like, sweet. I have this reel full of like sci-fi FPS redesigns, which is exactly what they're looking for. Um, so I felt really confident in my application because of that and felt even more confident that I could do the work if they gave me a test or if they gave me an actual like task once I got hired, if I got hired. Um, you know, it, it giving like my reel of sci-fi explosions to someone making the next Animal Crossing is like not going to fly, you know? So I was kind of pigeonholing myself a little bit. Um, but I think because of the fact that I was very specific with what I set my goal to, it helped me become really good at like one thing. Um, so when the opportunity for that one thing uh, to become applicable came around, I was able to knock it out of the park, air quotes. I I, I made my own like mess ups and whatnot applying <laughs> uh, specifically for the job that I have now. But um like if i if i did a different route and said like oh i really love animal crossing i want to make animal crossing sounds or animal crossing music i would have gone that route instead and instead of redesigning destiny you know twice a week every week i would have redesigned like stardew valley clips or like starbound clips terraria clips minecraft clips things like that and found ways to like make them unique or just sound good to me you know and just find ways to improve myself and and that niche instead um and so that's kind of like i guess that's some like mildly generally applicable advice is to like find something very niche and like stick to it and then you can be the person for that you know yeah i think 
there's a lot of conversation about that too, especially online, because you have you have people like Jacob Collier, right, who can do so many different things. But Mm -hmm. I think it kind of just depends on what you want and what direction you want to go in. And I think once you know that, at least a little bit, because like we talked about, it's kind of really tricky to know exactly what you want and it kind of changes over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I mean, I I was, I was one of the, uh, I was one of those people that wanted to do both music and sound design as a career. I was like, I'm going to do all the audio for games as like an indie developer, that kind of a thing. Um, Because like what I started doing, when I started taking classes in game design and everything, I was super into like indie games. Like Celeste had just recently come out. So I was like, I want to, I was like, I want to do the next Celeste. (laughs) I want to do that. I want that to be me. I want to touch hearts. Like that's what I want to do. Or the next Stardew Valley. Exactly. Yeah. Like I wanted to work on the next Stardew Valley, the next Minecraft, the next Animal Crossing. Um, And I still love those games to death, even though I work on like a high action triple a fps explosion bang bang you know everything like that um some of my favorite games are like i i played the absolute crap out of the binding of isaac uh all through like college and high school um i still like, haven't that played that oh it's so good highly <laughs> recommend you could spend too much time in that game <laughs> and i know that from experience um that means it's a good game oh it's a fantastic game i <laughs> Like, oh, I need to go back and actually play it because I haven't played it in a while. But like, I used to play the game for hours on end. Um, and so that was also in my like little hopes and dreams book of like, I want to work on the newest, coolest roguelike. I want to work on the next, uh, like, Enter the Gungeon. I want to work on risk the next. Of rain. Yeah, exactly. I want to work on the next Risk of Rain. Um, so, <laughs> risk of Rain 3, baby. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Shout, out, shout out Risk of Rain. The soundtrack um, stops, by the way. Oh, the soundtrack is killer for that game. <laughs> I oh, I was listening to the um the soundtrack for Risk of Rain was it remastered? Um, I yeah, forget it just exactly came out. The, I think. Yeah, I forget exactly how they they titled it, but the the remake of of the original Risk of Rain and oh, hearing so those good. songs from like ten years ago or whatever is so like simultaneously like nostalgic and like killer at the same time <laughs> i don't know how else to like describe it it's i love that music to death and yeah i was like when i was writing music with the hopes of writing music for indie games there was a few songs of mine that i like specifically emulated that style because i was like i want to work on that kind of a game um so yeah like i guess that kind of wrap that's a good way to wrap it back around to the whole like <laughs> work on something specific choose your animal crossing sound design choose your sci-fi shooter boom boom game shoot like shoot for like a a fighting game kind of sound design maybe like there are niches in the niches to specify and specialize in um that is usually a good idea for like improving pretty rapidly at something instead of like i'm gonna do a destiny clip today and then tomorrow i'm gonna do an animal crossing clip and then next week i'm going to do a street fighter 5 clip that kind of a thing yeah i think sorry what was i thinking can i think for a second <laughs> yeah no go for it I've, I've also kind of like i feel like i keep spinning my my conversation in like a circle where it's like coming back to the whole like career advice thing but no that's okay i've i think that actually instead of trying to focus too hard on just going in one specific direction because most conversations aren't actually like that, you know? Yeah. When you're, when you're talking to friends and stuff, you might talk about Stardew Valley, and then you might talk about mm-hmm. some 1980s horror movie. Right. You know? Yeah, it just it <laughs> jumps all over the place. But I forgot what I was thinking. I'm sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> We've been keeping it going for like a solid hour, so I'd say you're doing great. <laughs> Thank you, but... I had something good too. What was I going to (laughs) say? I just completely forgot. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, for me, I think it, I think most people would say I'm, so I'm mostly known for making 
ambient music and more atmospheric music. Mm -hmm. And I think it helps that I've I've gotten comments from people saying that they really like my ambient music because that can kind of give me a the idea to maybe focus more on that. Mm -hmm. And I think if you share your stuff out there and if you have a lot of people saying they like this specific thing that you're doing, then it could be a good idea to look at that and think, I, okay, I can, I can still do what I like doing in my free time, but mm -hmm. for this, for my job, basically, I should maybe focus more on this. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. If you start to notice like that you've fallen into a niche or something like that, definitely run with it. Like there's no reason to like fight the current, you know, um, like, yeah, like I, I'm trying to think if that's how I got into doing the sci-fi sound design stuff, but I don't think it really was. Um, but like now that I've, now that I've been doing sci-fi space magic sound design for two years at, at Bungie, um, that's kind of like a wave that I'll, I'll ride and say like in the future, if anyone's making sci-fi space magic sounds or needs them, I'm pretty good at them. Like I can, I can, at least I know I can make decent ones that are shippable. Um, so if you like, if you put your stuff out there, which I always think is like a pretty good idea. Um, if you're looking for like feedback and wanting to improve on stuff, um, if you're putting stuff out there and people start to say like, oh, this sounds really good uh, compared to some of the other stuff, totally in terms of like a career, like that seems like a good career move to focus on those. If you don't get a bunch of creative fulfillment out of it, that's a whole different discussion, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and someone's like, oh, I love it when you make rap music, but you hate making rap music. <laughs> then maybe you can just keep rap as a career, you know, and <laughs> do some other music as a, a creative free time kind of thing. Yeah, that gives me a lot to think about. Sorry, can I think for a second? Yeah, go for it. Is there anything that you want to talk about, by the way? Oh, gosh. Um, not that I can think of. This is like the first time I've ever done anything quite like this. <laughs> so I, I didn't have much prepared. Um, How are you I've doing, like, by the way? I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing well. I'm doing great. Cool. Yeah. I'm like halfway through my mug of tea. I'm, I'm chilling. <laughs> what kind of things do you do besides sound design? Just for oh. fun. That's a fantastic question. Um, I mean, obviously, I, I play video games. I try to keep up let's with go. what's going on. Yeah, let's go. Video games mentioned. Um, so, like, lately I've been playing, I mean, I've been playing Destiny 2 just to keep up with it, and I feel very beholden to that game at times. <laughs> but um, I, do, I do love Destiny 2 to death. Like, I started playing Destiny back in high school when the Taken King DLC came out and have been on and off as a player since then, but I'm very much so on at the moment. Um, so I've been playing a lot of Destiny 2. Uh, I've been trying to keep up with the times. I'm pretty, I'm pretty bad at keeping up with what's popular. So I've been playing some Baldur's Gate 3 with some friends and trying to understand why people like that. Hmm. Um, been playing, uh, I have plans to play uh, Helldivers 2 which seems pretty fun. Um, I've been playing through like Pokemon Scarlet um, or no, Violet. I have Violet. I have the other one, the one with all the robots in it. Um, There's so many trying... Pokemon games now. There are so many. <laughs> I used to love them as a kid and now I'm just like, ah, oh, it's another Pokemon <laughs> game. I, My friends and I play this uh, game called the Pokedoku, uh, which is like a Wordle style game where it's like a daily puzzle. Interesting. Um, it's like a three by three Sudoku grid, essentially, of um like there'd be three things on the left, three things on top. Um, and you have to match the row and the column. It'll be like water and fire. And then you have to do a water fire type, and then it'll be like water and doesn't evolve. And you have to do a water type that doesn't evolve, that kind of a thing. Um, it's much more complicated than that, which <laughs> I was not expecting because like one of them yesterday or the day before was like fairy type that evolves from a fossil or something like that or like I, I don't know like way 
beyond my very surface level scope of knowledge of Pokemon. So I was mm -hmm. like, holy moly, I didn't know it got this deep. Um, so that's been motivating me to try and beat uh, Violet because I just, I, I I picked it up. I started playing it. I had a good time and then just never beat it. Um, and I'm terrible at beating games. So Damn. I feel so bad about it too. <laughs> yeah. Like, Oh man, I I need to get better because like my my backlog just fills up and builds oh up. Oh my god, builds up. Like, you have no I, idea. <laughs> yeah, like I'm in the middle of like playing Dead Space two from like maybe like six or eight months ago. I started playing it, got like ten hours in, and then just stopped um, for like no reason. Uh, it's also so tricky to get back into it because you just forget where you are or what you're doing or yeah. how to play the game. Yeah, and you have to like find time to go back and play it too, <laughs> and like carve it out of your current like gaming schedule. Oh my um, yeah. yeah, so like it it gets pretty tough, but um, yeah, like free time definitely play a bunch of video games, try to keep up with what's out there, and um, I play I play games without the sound design as like a, a forefront in my mind. Thankfully, <laughs> I can still I can still do that. Um, it would kind of stink if i was just like listening to the game the whole time and not actually playing it yeah um so I, I still have that kind of separation which is nice um that's good uh i go climbing like i i do some bouldering that's kind of a thing that i do in my free time just for like physical exercise yeah just working literally like in this chair <laughs> on this screen for however many hours a day every day of the week gets a little like rough on the old body <laughs> uh so i try and do something active and running was like something i used to do in chicago but now that i live in seattle that's not a thing <laughs> i'm gonna do out here with the hills that is just not not on my priorities um my brother lives so... in seattle oh that's yeah cool. really nice yeah. um i bet he's also pretty into climbing a lot of people are like the climbing gyms always looked yeah climbing yeah. gyms are so fun mm-hmm I feel like a little kid sometimes in there where it's just like, all I get to do is just climb on things. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's like hard, like that thing is like bouldering and, and climbing oh, I on love bouldering. fake rocks is it's fun, but it's like hard. It's yeah. so hard. I love doing it without the ropes and then you're, you're just free climbing. It makes mm -hmm. me feel like Alex Hoddle. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've, I think I've done the rope climbing like once or twice and I ended up just getting scared of like the heights of it. Even though I know I have like the rope and everything to like belay me down, um, for some reason bouldering the heights doesn't quite get to me as as bad um, when I can just like fall for some reason. Um, yeah, and usually they have a mat too. Yeah, the the mats at the gym that I go to are like super soft. They're almost like hard to walk on. They're so soft. <laughs> um, so I know if I'm like falling, if I fall the right way, then I'm like set. I'm good. Yeah. Um, another thing that I do in my free time, which is very new to me ever since moving to Seattle um, is karaoke. I do way more karaoke than I have ever done, which was none before moving here. That's me um, now. Really? You're also doing karaoke? No, I I mean, I've never done it. So. Oh, you've never done it. Okay. I was about to be like, yes, another <laughs> karaoke person in the bag. Let's go. Um, I'm really interested in it, though. It's just the area I'm in doesn't really, or I don't know. I haven't done any research on it, so... Yeah, it's like not something you really think about. Like in Chicago, there were not very many karaoke like bars, at least as far as I was aware. Um, granted, like me when I like turned twenty one, it was twenty twenty, so like I wasn't going anywhere, anyways. You know, yeah. <laughs> like I'm not going out to bars at the start of the pandemic. Um, that was so, a very stinky time. Yeah, no, it it was a little rough. Um, it definitely like blew because I missed out on a lot of like hardware um interaction for audio classes like i had a audio production class at the start of the pandemic and we were going to like talk about equipment and like cables and how it all works and how to like route things physically and like a, a big deck and everything like that did not do any of that it was all hey. virtual um it was like here's a picture of an sm7b and Wait. uh Oh, look at that. There's a, a video picture of it. one. <laughs> <laughs> and that's like all I got. So let's go. Um, I I did end up like renting some equipment from our equipment cage at DePaul and like 
got familiar with what a boom arm was, but never really got a ton of experience going out and like using it on set, that kind of a thing. So I missed out on some of that stuff with the start of the pandemic. But um, I also like did not experience the bar scene in Chicago and see what uh, like karaoke bars were out there or anything like that. So I just didn't even, I knew karaoke is like a thing, but I never really went out and did it. Um, but when I moved here, a coworker of mine got me into it. Uh, and now I'm kind of like ingrained in the karaoke scene very, 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 very lightly, but at least like once every week or so I'm going out and I'm singing some karaoke. It's pretty fun. There's some really good singers out here too. Like yeah. There's some crazy singers. Um, <laughs> I mean, Seattle already has a good music scene. Yeah, that's true. I need to do some more of the music stuff around here thinking about it, but are there any yeah. bands that you've gone to concerts out here specifically or just in general yeah. or seattle um, or Ch chicago i don't think if i've seen i don't think i've i actually don't think i've gone to a concert in seattle um <laughs> which is weird because i've been here for like two years um that's funny that's actually where i went to my first concert oh really who'd you see i saw ajr are you familiar I with them i don't i don't know ajr no you've probably heard one of their songs they're one of those pop bands that have their hits are really big on the radio, but mm. a lot of their hits are so they're pretty different from each other. So okay. you might hear them and think they're from different bands. Oh, okay, that's kind of sick. I like that. Yeah, I like it when a, when a band switches up their style a bit. Um, I don't think even like the closest I've been to a concert in Seattle here is like a concert in Portland <laughs> I went to um, <laughs> for the band Half Alive. Oh, I love that band. Oh, really? Nice. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you would know about them or not, but like, yeah. I didn't, I didn't know, but I was going purely on a friend's recommendation. Um, and it was actually a great show. Like I had a great time. Um, I think that's the closest I've gotten to going to a music show in Seattle, even though it's not a show in Seattle at all. <laughs> um, I've, I've gone to like plenty of shows in Chicago. Like I saw, um, I think the most recent which is kind of funny. The most recent show that I went to in Chicago, I think was for twice, uh, the K-pop group, <laughs> um, purely because I wanted to see, well, half purely because I wanted to see what it was like to go to a K-pop concert, half because I actually do like the, the group. The music is pretty Let's good. Let's go. Yep. Uh, I, I'm not a K-pop person, but I'm actually, I should look into it more. It's, there's some good stuff in there. I didn't, I was totally not like a K-pop person for a while. I was like, <laughs> this is just like formulaic, totally just commercial music. There's no <laughs> soul in it. Um, and it still can feel like that, but like some of the sound design is kind of crazy in some <laughs> of those songs. Like they have some cool sounding drums um, that I've taken some inspiration from. Uh, so Twice is, is like the one group that, that like stuck with me. Um, I'm trying to think of other shows I've been to in, in Chicago. Like I saw, I've, I've seen Jacob Collier, you know, you mentioned oh. him earlier. I've, I've seen him twice in Chicago, nice. Um, which was fun. I saw him at Lincoln Hall, like just after Jesse volume one came out. And then I saw him at the Riviera when Jesse volume three had come out. So it was kind of cool to like see an early and a, a late yeah. version. He's gotten, a, he's gotten huge since then. It's, Crazy. He's blown up. He's gone so crazy. Like it's yeah. I mean, it's good for him. Like I'm happy he's he's doing what he's doing and he's having a good time doing it. Um, but I definitely kind of miss the more intimate, like, <laughs> quieter shows that he yeah. used to put on. Um I think we all have that with our favorite artists who blow up a bit. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um I should go to more shows though in Seattle. I just don't think I have because like I'm really bad at getting concert tickets. I'll see that like a show is gonna come up in like a few months or something like that and i'm like oh i'll get tickets when it gets closer and usually it sells out you know like a month beforehand anyways so i just miss out on the tickets and then i'm like oh missed out well because i have a free evening not the end of the world whatever um but like there's a this reminds me i should write this down i wanted to get tickets to go see a lewis cole show oh nice um because i really do like his music um but never have actually seen him live. And he doesn't he doesn't perform live that often, as far as I'm aware. So I think he has a Seattle show coming up soonish that I should buy a ticket for. 
I don't know if you've heard his song every time, but I think that's my favorite from him. Every time I have to like look at what <laughs> album that's off of because I'm so bad at song names. I just like listen through albums and uh Me too, actually. But like I never look at like the song and like the track list. It's probably not the best habit, but like it is what it is. I'm especially bad when I hear songs on the radio. I don't know any song titles. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, this song. Yes, this song is crazy. I yeah. love this song. It's really calming. Oh, yeah. It is so calming with the like the little Casio sounding keyboard in there. Oh, man. Yeah, it's beautiful. That is a great, great song. <laughs> I always liked his um gosh was i have to like look up the song name but uh the song what is it let it happen off of his newest album gosh that song strikes my heart so true i'll have to listen to it later oh it's so good i tried to, it's like it's one of those songs it's like oh, it's like microtonal which i didn't know when i first heard it um <laughs> but like i tried to play along to it and everything was out of tune and i was like oh, oh no he like totally detuned the song by like 50 cents or something like that to get to some like in between key. I'm like, God oh, dang it. Music theory has struck me once again in a way that I did not expect it to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, actually I've, for this interview so far, I think I've had so much fun because I've, without thinking about it, I just kind of, so usually when I do interviews, right, I write down a mm -hmm. lot of questions yeah, And I try to ask a lot of the questions I write down, mm -hmm. but I also do try to just listen to whatever people are saying and just go off of that. Right. And I think from this episode so far, I've had a lot of fun just not being afraid to just go completely off track. <laughs> you know? That's good. I'm glad. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, it's, I don't know. It feels more human to just go like go on the train of thought. Right. Yeah. Instead of being like, all right, I've answered your question. <laughs> What's the next one? You know, like I there's, there's a lot more to talk about than just like how to get a job, you know, <laughs> and I'm not the end all be all of how to get a job either. Like I would feel a little silly if I talked the whole time about how to make a career in game audio. Like I, I can't tell you how to do that. I can try. <laughs> um, but always take my advice with a grain of salt. Know that I come from a different background as you. Know that like I I have different experience than you. You might have more sound design experience than me, but less uh of some other experience. I don't know. Like there are much better sound designers than me out there that probably don't have a job, you know? Like that's just kind of the way things go. Like things just happen to work out for me. And I I try to make that very apparent that like. I was very lucky with like how I got to where I am and trying to come across as if I know the keys of the kingdom, even though I was just like 80% really lucky, um, feels disingenuous. So I'm glad that we could <laughs> kind of talk about something besides <laughs> that. So I didn't feel like I was preaching to a choir that didn't need me to preach to them to <laughs> butcher that metaphor. I think, yeah, from now on, I think um, I'm going to just come in prepared, obviously, but not be afraid to just go completely off track like we, we've done. Yeah, like people people are people. Like everyone, I'm sure most people, I shouldn't say everyone, but like I'm sure most people that you like interview, like watch a TV show, you know, and they have probably been enjoying it. Like I just finished last night, I think, um, might have been the night before that's not really pertinent uh <laughs> um i finished watching the new season of of hilda on, on oh, netflix nice. and like i love that show it's just cute like it's nice it's animated really well it's got a cute story yeah very heartwarming that kind of a stuff not related to sound design whatsoever even though that's <laughs> like my that's my public identity i guess is that i'm a sound designer working in triple a games uh i i watch animations man like I got my list of animes I'm going through. I go to the climbing gym. Do you have a my anime list, by the way? Oh gosh, I don't. Um, <laughs> I have like I have my list of animes that I'm watching right now that I've never like formally put one together of like what I've seen and what I'm trying to see. Um, but like right now I'm watching 
I, I don't know what people are calling it, but I've been saying it's Dungeon Meshi. Um, but, or like Delicious and Dungeon, I guess, is the full English translation for the name. Um, super cute. Uh, I've been trying to keep up with Free Rin because people have been raving about that. Mm. Um, also, like a great show. I'm not trying to say it's bad. Like it's, I'm having a fantastic time with it. And also finding out that I really like fantasy anime because of these two shows. Um, I've been meaning to rewatch Yuru Camp because that's like a classic. So cozy. Nothing goes wrong. Um, I feel bad. I don't think I've heard of these before. <laughs> oh, really? don't. I mean, it's just adding to your list of stuff to go see. Yeah. Um, I'll, have to send yeah. You, I'll, I'll have to send you my list later. Please do. I love watching some new stuff because like there's plenty of anime that I've I've never seen um and like yeah i don't know i i've always tended more towards the very like cute and like uh not as serious i guess to yeah. to put it uh broadly uh animes so like the rom-coms and the cute like slice of life stuff um but it's not to say that i haven't seen like um gosh what was that one called um like I've seen like Tokyo Ghoul and I've seen um Demon Slayer. Calls. I have seen Demon Slayer. Yeah, I guess that is kind of a dark show, isn't it? <laughs> it's pretty <I> dark. Because <laughs> like so much of it is also just like heartwarming, just like them yeah, having true. a funny time. <laughs> uh that like you forget that they're like demons, like literally <laughs> killing each other. <laughs> um but yeah, I've seen I've seen Demon Slayer. I haven't seen the new season of it, but I've been meaning to catch up on that um psychopaths i watched psychopaths like years ago that was kind of a dark one um ajin i watched ajin and no, i read ajin i didn't watch that one um and then like yeah like I've, I've seen some of the like more like oh i'm introspective and like my heart is dark kind of edgy mm -hmm. animes um and those are great too but i don't really seek them out that much some people recommend them to me i always watch them uh so i'm always open to seeing what's new out there um also like action animes like i tried i tried watching like my hero i think max recommended my hero to me and i was like oh this is pretty good it was just a bit long like i just don't yeah. know i could finish the whole thing but like i had a good time with it yeah i i actually watched some of my hero but i think for me it got kind of a lot after the first or second season i was just kind of done after a little bit you mm -hmm. know that's, that's what... where i'm i'm a big fan of of shows that like don't overstay their welcome a little yeah. bit you know like two to three seasons is like digestible and yeah. i like anime because it's like 23 minute episodes or something like that usually sometimes they're even like shorter they're like 12 minutes and i i can deal with that that is like i'm not sitting there for like a two and a half hour long dune part two i'm not sitting there for Peace. yeah exactly <laughs> i'm not sitting there for a thousand episodes of one piece like <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sure one piece is a great show my friends I, love I piece, can't so. watch that i can't i can't watch it it's too long i don't have the brain capacity to dedicate like yeah the whole like fold of my brain to all the one piece knowledge that i'm gonna have to hold on to to just understand why the latest season is as cool as it is <laughs> and there's a live action i've heard that that's really good i haven't seen it yet um but I, i've heard that the live action is actually really well done yeah actually live ad adaptations of stuff has been popping off in the last few years did you see the um this might date the episode but like there was the borderlands movie i didn't know uh, i didn't know there was one yeah there's a there's a live action borderlands movie i think the trailer came out today or oh, really I seen wow. the trailer but they've got like kevin hart as roland <laughs> jamie lee curtis as uh Tannis. but i think that's that's a great casting right there i think she's gonna kill that role um it seems fun it seems like a cool movie it's always interesting to see how video games get adapted into live action stuff yeah. um i always like there's a, there's like a, a a grim part of me that wants it to fail catastrophically <laughs> in like a funny way yeah just like how the like the it's resident so bad, evil movies good. did yeah exactly because like the old resident evil movies are like so bad it's <laughs> so funny bad and they're great to watch just because they're hilariously over the top and nonsensical and there's Which portal kind of, movies too are there really portal movies yeah i think they're they're made by this director who's i think he's known for making not good movies but for some reason he was able to make a bunch of video game adaptations oh my god portal 
2019 horror drama, an hour and 15 minutes. Wait, that, that might not be it. I think it's a bit older. It's older than that? Yeah. I'm not sure, though. <laughs> I'll, have to I'll have to look it up. Because that sounds incredible to me. I would love to watch something like that. I'm <laughs> such a like so, I'm such a sucker for like so bad it's good kind of stuff. Like where it's I just can't stop watching it. So I have to see what's <laughs> next. And when it comes to like video game adaptations, I uh, I like I'm such a glutton for punishment with that kind of stuff. It's just like I have to see how badly they screwed it up. You know, yeah. sometimes they do pretty good. You know, like the like the Mario movie. Yeah, and the Sonic movies. Yeah, and like the Sonic movies were actually pretty good too. Yeah. Um, after so they like, redesigned him. <laughs> after they did it, yeah. But see, like that was fun too. That was like a social phenomenon. <laughs> like when that happened, everyone was like, "Why does Sonic look so jank? Like why?" Yeah. Is and I feel so bad because they like. I think that the... company went out of business. That the one that had to redesign him. Really? Yeah. Gosh, that's so unfortunate. Because like, as funny as it was, because it was really really funny looking <laughs> it's rough because i want things to also succeed because people are just trying their best you know yeah. most of the time like and I'm they're sure just they... doing their job exactly yeah like no one was like i'm gonna ruin the sonic franchise with this movie and i'm gonna make everyone's lives miserable by making a jank sonic like people make jank sonics all the time like have you seen sonic ocs like i had my own you know like <laughs> me too like people make jank stuff all the time and it's just so much fun to appreciate the jank <laughs> rather than like criticize it and and make them like lose their jobs and money over it or whatever so i i definitely i like i there's a part of me that wants to see the sonic movie with the old sonic just to see <laughs> what it would have have looked like but it, yeah. at least we got the trailer probably somewhere that i can go rewatch. <laughs> i'm sure with ai someone could probably just re put that design in <laughs> Someone AI remakes the Sonic <laughs> movie with old Sonic. Oh that boy. would be kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for today's interview, if you're cool with that. Yeah, that works for me. Cool. I had, I had a lot of fun talking to you today, and I really appreciate you coming on. And yeah, thanks for joining me. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. This is kind of fun just to like chat about all sorts yeah. of random stuff including yeah. the the sound design i got the like i got the career and then we got the fun in there we got a little, little balance of both worlds in there i think it was pretty good yeah well thanks everyone for listening i upload every friday on youtube or wherever you listen to podcasts basically and i also have a patreon now which you can check out if you're interested so yeah i'll see you guys next friday I love you and keep on keeping on. Bye. See ya. I love you guys. And I love you, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.